uh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Um, we're just about to start the, uh, the high-level thematic debate on UN peace and security. Without further ado, let me uh, hand over to the President of the UN General Assembly, His Excellency Mons Lukatov. Good morning. Uh, we're having yet another high-level thematic debate today, as the one we had on the 21st of April on Sustainable Development Goals and Climate Implementation. Uh, and I think there is the connection between the two that, well, on the great issues of sustainability and climate, we have realized in this organization the need for multilateral action uh, and, and taking uh, very strong decisions. We are in the process of implementing. When we look at the peace and security activities in the United Nations, we, we have much more work to do in order to realize the need of both major and minor powers and regional organizations to work together to solve the many problems we are facing with uh, new tribal conflicts also. I mean, the United Nations was, was founded uh, in a world where conflicts were playing out between nations. Uh, many of the conflicts we're facing right now are conflicts inside nations, but also cross-border fights against non-state actors, the whole question of terrorism. And uh, we, we have uh, an increased number of ongoing conflicts with great sacrifices and millions of people uh, displaced and refugees right now. So what we hope is that we can contribute to outcomes uh, from the very good reports we have, the HIPAA report, uh, President Amos Horta is here and we'll be joining the, the, the discussion these two days. There are very good advices in that report. We have uh, the uh, just recently adopted uh, uh, common resolution in the General Assembly and uh, the Security Council on peacebuilding architecture and peacebuilding peace activities. We have a need to improve also financially the uh, efforts of prevention the efforts of putting in the instruments we have defined on peace uh, building even before conflicts really break out uh, and in that way avoiding uh, that many very costly peacekeeping operations. Uh, in few words, how can we improve the possibility of prevent uh, because prevention is always better, cheaper and more efficient than cure. So these will be very uh, much the, the uh, basic themes of this discussion over the coming two days. And hopefully it will also end up presenting a more precise roadmap for the person that is uh, finally elected as the next Secretary General of the United Nations. Thank you very much, Waldo. Do you expect any outcome uh, from this meeting? And can you give us an update of how many high-level officials are present in the event? Well, we have more than, than 20 ministers present, uh, and, and a lot of, of other representatives are taking part, and a good, good uh, 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 cross-cutting uh, representation from, from experts and the different panels. And we have also a number of the candidates for the next Secretary General uh, present here, so so uh, it's a w very good turnout. The outcome, uh, I intend to make a kind of uh, presidential uh, document uh, summing up the discussion after these two days and consult with member states uh, so that we more or less agree on the the uh, conclusions we can draw out of this. PGA, do you have any update on the SG race and when there might be another round of uh, interviews uh, in the GA? Well, it's, it's uh, the clear impression I have got is that at least a couple of more candidates will come during this month of May. 
uh, be officially announced from governments. And uh, therefore, it's my intention, uh, as it looks now on the 7th of June, to have additional uh, informal dialogues with those candidates that may, may have been presented up till then. And what I will do is also I will urge member states and potential candidates actually to come forward now so that we could be more or less sure that we have the, the whole group of candidates presented in June. Will there be any deadline for them to get in? We have no official deadline because, as you know, this was a result of a consensus. Uh, this is the outcome, what we are working with now in the informal dialogues of a consensus resolution in the General Assembly. And, well, it was not possible to reach an agreement of a specific uh, final date for presenting candidates. But I hope that the way the procedure is unfolding will actually contribute to the realization among countries and candidates that it's best to come forward now. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, President Barack Obama has just announced uh, that he's visiting Hiroshima uh, yeah. in the coming weeks. Do you think this will help the world uh, nuclear disarmament? You've been many times to Hiroshima, I suppose. I, I've been twice to Yamashima. I was invited by the Japanese government to go there in September when I visited for consultations over the work in the United Nations. Yes, I think it's very, very good that uh, President Obama will go there recognizing, uh, uh, of course, that th these weapons first used uh, caused tremendous uh, sufferings. And, and as an, the most brutal illustration you can have of a necessity to avoid the use of nuclear weapons, and of course also in the understanding that as long as they exist, there is always, always a risk of unintended uh, use of them. There's also the risk nowadays even more than before of these weapons of mass destruction, not only nuclear weapons, but chemical and biological weapons, uh, coming in the hands of non-state actors, which is the most dangerous of all because uh, there's no threat of mutual destruction present there if you don't know where they come from. So, so the need to to abolish, as at the end, nuclear weapons. As President Obama spoke about it in his uh, famous speech in Prague in the beginning of his presidency, uh, is really a process that had to be restarted. So I hope it will contribute to that. Thanks a lot. On, on peacekeeping, uh, one, of, one of the crises that the Security Council and the Peace Building Commission are dealing with is Burundi. And it's my understanding that DPKO told the council that it would take up to 18 months or even 24 months to deploy peacekeepers to Burundi, where the Secretary General has said there's a threat of mass atrocity. Do you think that the speed of deployment and the ability of peacekeepers to actually get into the field will be dealt with in this? And do you have any update on the Secretary General's request that, that for GA action on sexual abuse and exploitation by peacekeepers, i.e. holding you know, wrongdoers to account, name and shame, is that going to be part of this debate, or is there some separate GA process on his report? Thanks. I think we will have yet another discussion on uh, how to deal with the sexual abuse uh, questions in the General Assembly. But of course, it's also a part of the, of the whole discussion of how do we organize and perform the peacekeeping operations around the world. And, and th this is, well, it's a, qu it's a problem for the United Nations, but certainly also a problem to be dealt with by the, the uh, troop contributing countries, uh, 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 and I, I very much hope that uh, they will be brought to justice, those perpetrators we have had here. About the speed of deploying uh, UN peacekeeping operations, I, I, I think we have, in generally, a problem here that has to be also part of discussion these days. Uh, on Burundi in particular, I would say, yes, it's a serious situation, but I think also that the lessons we so, so, so tragically learned from Banda uh, 22 years ago has turned very, very strong attention, both from the African Union, from the Security Council, and the Secretary General, both of them being visiting Burundi recently, uh, that uh, we hope we can contain the situation. And 
I really hope that if operations were necessary, we could act much quicker than than the the the, the time frame you mentioned. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a quick follow-up on the two new possible uh, candidates for the position of the Secretary General. Uh, can you give us any indication uh, who they might be? No, I think we will have to wait for the official announcement from the conscious, but we haven't to wait for very long, I understand. Okay, one more. Yeah, on today's, on today's session that you're doing, you've gotten uh, quite a number of ministers um, coming in for it. Um, what, what is really the importance of bringing such high-level people in for um, a discussion of this kind? What a, what a, what's the world going to get out of it? <laughs> well, you know better than I, it's always a question what would be the outcome of meetings in the United Nations. But I, I, I think what, we, what we're dealing with here is an increasing understanding also among uh, the major powers of the UN that the problems we are facing are uh, international in their character, uh, problems, all the problems we have, from climate change to, to terrorism, uh, uh, the, the ongoing conflicts, are uh, only possible to solve with joint international action. That, that means that the Security Council have to reconsider its role, as it has done, finally, on Syria, and hopefully contributing to a negotiated outcome uh, there. What we are trying to do here is, of course, not we have no authority to involve ourselves with the workings of the Security Council, but we have, I think, the possibility and the obligation uh, to push forward the uh, uh, conclusions on the reports from the high level, uh, from the HIPPO report, from the, 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 the peace uh, the building resolution and the resolution on, on women, peace and security, uh, to make a synthesis out of that, that represents a stronger, more immediate, uh, more coherent UN and regional response to, to the conflicts we're facing. And I hope that we will contribute to that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that we are having in the discussions uh, uh, President uh, Ramos Horsa, who, who is the author of the report uh, on peacekeeping operations. We have the presidency of the Security Council with the Egyptian Foreign Minister. Of course, we had the Deputy Secretary General. So, together, we should be able to move forward. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. Thank you.